Welcome to Quit Your Whining. This week we're talking about net neutrality. Joining me this week is Josh Hadley, the angriest man on the internet. How are you doing? Seriously? Uh, am, am I that angry? Okay. Well, okay. Grumpiest? We accept grumpiest. I seem oddly rational and calm most of the time now. It, it, it's surprising what getting divorced does to your demeanor. I wouldn't know, and hopefully I never do. <laughs> you will someday, my friend. You will someday. Yeah. All right. So uh, net neutrality has come into the news again recently. Uh, if you want more information on net neutrality, check out my earlier video in the week called the Net Neutrality, uh, net neutrality Primer, where I, where I explain it in some excruciating details. But Josh is going to be here to kind of balance it out to make it a little less techno babbly. Uh, the main idea behind net neutrality is for the ISPs and governments to, or for the government to come in and kind of regulate what ISPs can do to your data. So they want to say is data is um, all the same regarding or regardless of user content, website, platform, application, the type of equipment attached, and the mode of communication. Now. This all really boils down to is filtering of content. Now, probably the biggest problem is, well, be honest, Comcast. Comcast is the evil empire in my mind for filtering content. Uh, how about you, Josh? What comes to mind when you think of an ISP actually filtering content? Well, I would say it would be Verizon, and not just because the head of the FCC, Ajit Pai, is a fucking former Verizon lawyer, but oh, Verizon, right. was, Verizon was just caught, I think it was two weeks ago, throttling down Netflix and YouTube. And when they were caught, they said it was an error. They were testing out new video optimization software that malfunctioned and accidentally did the opposite of what it was supposed to do. And everybody knows horse shit. You were doing this and you would have kept doing it if you didn't get caught. Yeah, but... Someone noticed it and you were going, hey, one of our guys is the head of the FCC. Nothing's going to happen to us. Yeah, and, and, and before we start, I don't want to point left or right, because to be completely honest with you, the left could have instituted a lot of net neutrality rules when Obama was in power and didn't. And mainly because Comcast is, was pretty tight with the Obama administration. And Comcast did a lot, to, did a lot of shady shit, particularly to Netflix, before, they, before Netflix came up and paid him a nice, wrote him a great big check to fix the problem. Now, I don't know, know if you remember, do you remember when Netflix was fighting with Comcast and Verizon a couple years ago about their content? Well, the way, that, the way all that breaks down, Comcast is arguably the most evil company out there right now. I think even worse than Disney. Comcast... They, they are the equivalent of the Empire in Star Wars. Yeah. They want to rule everything, and they think you should have to pay for everything. Their rationale was so many people are using Netflix, therefore so much of, our, of the data that we have that is going through our servers is going to Netflix, so Netflix should pay more. Net neutrality says you can't do that. And they're like, nope. well, then we need to change net neutrality because we should be able to charge by how much you use, not not a flat rate to make it an even playing field for everyone. And the same thing I said earlier in the week was data is intangible. It isn't a finite resource like oil or, or you know, like oil or gasoline or anything like that. Data is intangible, yet they're trying to trade it like a commodity. I have serious problems with that. That shouldn't be allowed. Data is not something to be traded, mainly because at this point, there's only a handful of companies that actually own the backbone of what we consider to be the internet in the United States. Comcast isn't even the biggest one, is the biggest last mile provider. But, you know, there's Level 3, XO, and plenty others, and a couple of others, who own all the backbones and you should see the shady shit that they do to, the, to companies like Comcast and them to charge them to get access to what essentially is the internet, especially on like a per user basis. It's fucking insane. Comcast though, Comcast, Comcast right now, 
the internet is essentially an oligarchy. But Comcast wants a monopoly. Yeah, they want to say because it, because of the way the, the the cable service providers are are regulated, there really could only be one major one in every market. So if Comcast is the major provider in your market, that's it. Yeah. You don't have another option to go to. There is literally no competition. If they destroy net neutrality, they can charge you whatever they want, and you don't have an option to go somewhere else. Yeah, and one of the big problems we have with, with that is I live in a rural area. I live in rural America. I have to use Comcast. I don't have Verizon. Fios, they quit building it out because, oh, the government was actually paying for Fios, not Verizon. And DSL is ancient technology that doesn't really work unless you're within a mile of the damn end of the line, which you're not getting that infrastructure in rural America. And the other, on the other options are Verizon says mobile is an option. Mobile is not an option. No, because they institute data caps. And even if you go over the data cap, what do they do if you have unlimited internet and you go over, and you go over let's say, 20 gigs of data? What do they do to you? They throttle your ass. And they say, well, that's not, that's still unlimited. That's still unlimited. And they'll Did, throttle you down. To be fair, data caps also are artificial. Yes. There is, there is literally, as you pointed out, data is intangible. There's no difference to, let's just say Verizon is your provider in this example. Verizon giving you 20 gigs of data versus giving you 40 gigs of data. It literally does not cost them a cent more to do that. No, and what's their excuse? Oh, well, you're using, you're using more data than 98% of our users do because you fucking cap them. So they're not gonna you go over that cap. I mean, there are super users out there. I happen to be one and I use Comcast. I have a two terabyte cap on the internet. Two terabyte. Now that may not seem a lot to some of you, but you know what they're really targeting here. You know what they're really targeting, right? With that cap, cord Probably cutters. Pete. They're targeting the cord cutters who don't have cable. Guess how much I have to pay for unlimited internet? Fifty dollars a month, which is pretty much the difference if if I had cable TV service. Because well, yeah, because the, the entire cable market, and this is one of the problems with the bundling. When you bundle all of this crap together, it's in their best interests yeah. to make it more difficult for you to go somewhere else. Because, see, oh, if, yeah. if, there, if there was an alternative, if you could have actual competition, if you could have Verizon and AT&T and Comcast and Charter and Time Warner all competing in the same area you would see prices drop dramatically but yeah. they all they all made an agreement years ago to segment off the country this is your territory this is our territory that's a and t and t's and we will not get in we will not get in each other's way well, that's I, an oligarchy i don't know who changed this but it used to be that the 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 isps had the cable companies and a lot of the service providers had to sublet their networks to Earthlink and other providers in order to provide some sort of competition. That went away. I don't know if that went away with Bush or Obama. I'm not sure. I know it went away around that time. I, I want to say it might have been Bush. I'm not sure. But they used to sublet it and that kind of created some artificial competition because Earthlink, they have to allow them onto the network and they could offer it a lower fee. So that would keep the prices somewhat down for companies like Comcast and them. They had to keep it lower, but that went away. Now it's you're, you're, you're only getting the service provider from whoever has the line. And there's no regulate and there are regulations in place to control that, but the regulations are very loose and they're always fighting to raise that price because they know you can't go anywhere else. And that's that's problematic. And and what's what's their defense? You can use satellite. No, satellite is not a reasonable alternative. Satellite is slow. It doesn't work for real time communications like gaming or VoIP or video conferencing. It, it doesn't work. 
I've or had. even Skype, what we're using right now. Yeah, no, it doesn't work. There's lag. It, it, the lag is anywhere between 200 to 300 milliseconds just to hit the damn satellite to come back down. It, it's insane the amount of lag that you get. Plus, we also have a problem going on right now where they're lobbying to redefine what broadband is. Now, this is a problem because right now it's kind of unofficially at 20 megabytes a second, which is reasonable in my mind for basic communication. They want to knock it down to 10 for minimum for, to be qualified for broadband. That's not reasonable. You couldn't really even stream Netflix halfway decently with that amount of bandwidth. Because even though your data limit is going to be at 10, in reality, you're going to be much lower than that because of the way it tears off. It's not going to work that way. And all this is because they want to prevent, in my opinion, the other to prevent other content providers from using their networks. And that, to me, is the root of the problem. Comcast... And now what? Didn't DirecTV buy or AT and T bought Time Warner, right? Or AT and T, AT and T and Time Warner were attempting to merge. I don't remember. If, did that actually happen yet? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they actually did manage to merge. It's moving forward, so it, it is looking that will happen. So Time Warner is going to be merging with AT and T. AT and T bought DirecTV which is the main competitor to landline. So we're going to have AT&T owning Time Warner, which owns Warner Brothers and the, the one of the largest movie studios in the country. And Comcast owns Universal, which is another one of the lar big, full, uh, what, big five, I would say. There are five big ones, would you arguably say? Okay, here's a perfect example of what people need to go back to now only the older among your listeners are going to get this but go back to before ma bell was broken up mm -hmm. do you remember what the telecommunications industry was back in the 1970s and early 1980s at&t that was a complete monopoly yep they decided what you will pay and you literally had no other choice they owned your telephone you didn't get to go and buy your own telephone at best buy they literally if you pick up an old school telephone will say property of at&t on the bottom of it they, and and then the reagan administration came in and broke that up and you might go well, yay reagan's but you go no the reason they broke that up was because some of the other companies that wanted in on that market were some of Reagan's donors. They broke it up for their own selfish goals. But MCI. the fact is, but the fact is that used to be a monopoly. Yeah. And that's what Comcast and all these other ones want now. Now, here here is the thing I don't understand though. Cuz okay, Comcast is obviously the biggest one, but you also have AT&T and Verizon and all this. Mm. I don't know why they're all allied in this because if if net neutrality goes away do you really think comcast is going to play nice with these others they're going to start to very quickly swallow them up and shit them back out Here's yet for some you're... reason verizon and for some reason verizon and at&t think this is all going to be you know we're, we're, we're going to just piece this whole thing out verizon will be over here at&t will be over here comcast will have this no, Comcast is one of the most sadistically well, evil companies that there are. They will swallow everyone else. You know what? I, you know what Comcast is re, is is uh, reforming right now, right? Mobile, mobile. Uh, they're recreating a cell service. They used to have a mobile telephone service many years ago. Uh, they sold it, Verizon, I think. Um, but now they're actually creating another mobile network. They want to create a mobile network because they know that's going to be the future. That's going to really come into Verizon because Verizon's pretty much divested themselves of the landline business. You've heard of Frontier Communications before? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they bought pretty much all of Verizon's landline service. Verizon knows that wireless is the future. So they are pretty much uh, divesting themselves of landline going strictly wireless. And Comcast is going to be getting on this too. And that's going to be problematic because that means they're not going to be putting into wired copper and fiber infrastructure anymore that's going to hurt everybody because wireless has limitations severe limitations 
And we can't, and especially with data caps and things like that. And what they'll do is, is what they're doing now. They'll create preferred providers. So if you have right now, net neutrality should technically include, if you are on T-Mobile, let's say, okay? T-Mobile is the best example. You know how you get YouTube, Pandora, things like that for free, or that they don't kind of get your data cap? But what about if you run, let's say, you, you used to, uh, Jackalope Radio. They don't get that deal. Why? Because they don't pay the money to T-Mobile. It pretty much stifles any startups from getting into markets that could potentially compete with people like Veri with SoundCloud or Pandora or iHeartRadio. And same thing with video providers. If you're not Vimeo or voodoo or youtube you don't get that deal and that means that all the they're gonna hold all the content there's also a censorship issue to deal with too and oh, now yeah. i'm not i'm not talking like government censorship although that is a possibility okay comcast let's say for the sake of argument comcast gets this and that neutrality goes away comcast is the ruler out there you want to put out a youtube video that criticizes comcast guess what your video uploads at, at dial-up speeds. They can easily say, if you're not with us, then you're against us and you, you get throttled. What about if you create a website called ComcastSucks.com? It could be really slow to get there. Yeah. Really slow. And don't and, think they and, aren't and, doing that already. And the, the, the thing is, Ajit Pai and the right wing are painting this as net neutrality is holding back competition. Net neutrality is holding back the free market. We need to get rid of net neutrality and yeah. just let levels fall where they may. Now, th this whole free market attitude, I, I, I don't I don't understand A free because market, okay. the, the free market will always screw the little guy. Always. You cannot have an unregulated market. You can't. No. I am not for government regulations on, you know, every piece of thing you do, every, every piece of minutia. But there is a point. There's you a have to have regulations, Matt. Because yeah. if you don't have regulations, say, in the coal mining industry, you get cave collapses. Oh, yeah. You get silos blowing up. And oh, then yeah. they always bitch about, well, there's too many regulations. They're getting, they're cutting into profits. Yeah, go back to the robber baron era. When, when one company could rule an entire industry and you were literally nothing more than a piece of meat. That's what they want to oh, go yeah. back to. Yeah, and let's also not forget that they want to... Um... At the same exact time, what they're trying to do is say, uh, well, yeah, and but there's a difference between free open market and a, 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 monop a closed market. We are in a closed market already because it's a private industry that is controlled by specific individuals in a regionalized sense. This isn't this isn't something like fast food restaurants and you know the the franchise wars where taco bell won no this isn't anything like that that's an open market it's fast food you can choose what fast food you want you can go whatever you want their main regulations for that are of course health and human safety standards but this is talking about regulating communication channels where they own the lines comcast owns my communication lines verizon owns my communication lines this isn't like anybody can come in and build a new telecommunications infrastructure. Google has tried this. Oh, Google Fiber, by the way, is a failure. They made no money off of it. They had tried to push this objective to, sh to shove out these uh, closed market service providers and failed because they realized that they don't have the capital to keep this up. But then, okay, here's but my the question. Let me finish real quick. The regulations are in place to keep them from screwing us over which they are comcast is screwing us over royally because if you want to create a, if you want to do anything to create your own service or to to use your services that are outside of what they want you to do it they will penalize you uh, go ahead sorry but he, he, here's the other thing to look at now it's primarily the right wing that wants to get rid of net neutrality do you guys really think if net neutrality goes away, 
that all of a sudden everything's going to become easier and better? How I mean, I was just reading one just today as I was looking up something. Uh, it was a right wing website. I don't remember which one it was, um, and they they had the argument that. If net neutrality goes away, the government will no longer be able to spy yes. on you. And, and, and they, they are selling yeah. this. They are selling this Alex Jones style yeah. as it's true freedom without net neutrality. They're trying to sell it as with net with the internet being classified as a type two utility that that's government control and that's bad. No, do you really not. think? Do any of you right wingers really think? That if Comcast gets a complete monopoly on this market, that they're not going to fuck you too? No. And, and that's, I, I'm a right winger. I am on the right. I am a conservative. And I'm in whole for net neutrality. And they are way off base with this because they're like, well, if the government starts regulating this way, this will introduce censorship. Nothing in, if anything, one of the key, key tenants in net neutrality is the elimination of censorship. They want to uncensor the internet. Not like uh, you could argue they want to get rid of the walled gardens of like Facebook and things like that and allow nudity. That's up to the service providers to provide that. But they don't want the government coming in and or worse, the content, uh, the, the service providers to say, this content is unsafe we won't allow access to this content or will prohibit or slow down access to content we find objectionable. We can't have that. We've already have that problem with YouTube and YouTube's gotten into some water over the shit because of what they did with their practices where they pretty much got rid of anyone they considered to be unsavory or penalized them. Which, by but the way, the part time. of net neutrality would affect things like YouTube. But at the same time, the right wing being primarily a Christian, a, a Christian faith, you know, Christians primarily are yeah. right wing. Mm. They want <laughs> they, they want one of the things I've, I've seen on these right wing sites is that with net neutrality, that's what allows Muslim websites, Islamic websites, yeah. anti-Christian websites, and they want that gone. They literally want to censor the Internet by saying well, if we keep it like a, a, this, a, a, it's censorship. To be fair, the, the left wants to go and get rid of all the alt-right websites, any of the neo-Nazi sites, and any of the KKK sites or anything like that, and wants to get rid of those too. <laughs> to be fair. As they, we're talking about this, I mean, the Daily Stormer, I'm... Fuck these guys. Th their site has been kicked off Google and GoDaddy. In a way, it is censoring yeah. these morons' right to free speech. I'm sorry, you can't. That's also one thing they want to prevent is Google's meta. Google's censoring people. Google has been caught doing this many a times. I I know this sounds like Alex Jones level shit, but you and I both know people who have been censored by Google, and it does happen. Because Google will, Google has a way of modifying that Alaga theorem. And then they say, well, that's how the search Alaga theorem works and how our software works. No, it's not. You can put in filters and make it work the way you want it to. I work in the industry. I know how you can make this stuff do what you want it to do. And they will do that. But net neutrality gets rid of that. Because net neutrality wants to get rid of that censorship or that type. Everything should be... Uh, curated the same exact way and weighted the same way. You shouldn't be saying, well, because this content contains this, we're going to weigh it differently. That's that's. You unethical. also have to look at the price to the consumer. Yes. Okay, if Comcast would get rid of net neutrality, and the reason I keep going to Comcast is they are throwing no, millions and millions of dollars oh. to do this. They are the biggest proponent of net mm -hmm. neutrality is evil. But if Comcast would get rid of net neutrality, they AT would begin. AT and T is pretty bad too. <laughs> well, they would begin throttling Netflix and YouTube. Yeah. And, well, okay. Let's leave YouTube out because they're free. They would begin throttling Netflix. Do you yeah. think people are going to want to stick with well, Netflix if it's throttled? No. Not now. So Netflix will pay them to make it go faster. They did. Do you think Netflix is going to absorb that cost? They did. Fuck no. They're going to pass it on to you. They did. And they did raise the rates on YouTube because of it. 
come can uh two three years ago all right so i'm gonna mind if i go on a rant real quick all right so our charter and some other smaller cable companies were doing this thing called uh they were kind of putting Netflix's contents and servers inside their data centers. You know, that makes it faster. You don't have to go all the way through the web to YouTube or to Netflix's content and then bring it back in. Instead, you go straight to the data center for the ISP and stream it that way. Makes it a lot faster. Well, Comcast, uh, Netflix was pushing Comcast to do this and Comcast was saying, no, we're not going to let you put your equipment inside of our data center. So uh, Netflix started putting these little ads before if you're on Comcast saying like, this could be faster, but Comcast won't let it. And eventually the, idea, the deal came down to where Netflix paid Comcast a shit ton of money. I don't remember the amount, but it was a lot of money to, a, to pretty much create a fatter pipe directly to Netflix and let them get or to stream faster. Oh, this also is now why if you are a Comcast subscriber, you have a Netflix app on your uh, cable boxes. That was part of the deal. So that's how that happened. By the way, you know who else Comcast owns a or has a uh, invested interest in outside of Netflix? Hulu. They own part of Hulu. You think yeah, Hulu? So they're would, in direct competition. Yeah. Th th that, th that's the other thing. Is you know, Verizon has their own streaming service. AT and T, yeah. has, you know, is working on their Time Warner has theirs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you think that they're going to want a competing service to run as well no. as their own home service? No, they're not. But then there's also the fact of the internet nowadays is so ingrained in American society; it is a utility. Yes. Just it is try. Much a utility. It is as much a utility as your telephone is. In fact. I'll see it's you, more Matt, important you can't than your do, telephone. You can't do anything anymore without the internet. Uh, when when my hours dropped from my job over the, over the winter, I had to file unemployment. You can't do that over the phone anymore. Nope. It's internet only. Go online. My, my, my banking is internet only. Yep. I can only pay my phone bill internet only now. Yep. I can only pay my utilities. Mm -hmm. they, they they actually have a surcharge for paying in person now. Oh, you the wanna... internet is so is so ingrained that if Comcast gets what they want, I'm not saying society will break down, but society will become way more difficult overnight to just go through your day-to-day -day life. Oh. I'm not talking watching movies or playing no. games. I'm talking about banking. I'm talking about paying your water bill. How do you get Obamacare? If, or if you need to sign up for a health care plan, how do you do it now? You got to yeah, go there's, online. There's no phone system. I mean, I, I, when I was on, when Oh, you ever try the 90s, calling your local unemployment office? You ever try calling your state unemployment office for information? You're lucky if you can even get in. Or if you can get in the hold on, in Florida. You, you used to be able to actually file your weekly claim on the phone. They got rid of that. I, I remember yeah. a couple of years. It was a couple of years ago, maybe 2012, 2013. I don't have a job and a fucking I, internet. Yeah. I, 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 I fucked something up with my internet thing. I didn't pay the bill on time. They shut me off, and it took them a month to turn me back on. So I had no internet yeah. at my house for a month. And I, again, I'm not talking about watching movies or playing video games or something. Do you know how difficult my day-to-day -day life was? I, at this point, I didn't have like a, an unlimited cell phone plan. Do you know how difficult it was to have to take my yeah. laptop to McDonald's down the street, sit there for an hour, do everything I had to do online, and then go back home? Oh, I love the proponent of this. Go to the library. You know how hard... Yeah, okay, so I yeah, don't have internet service. I, yeah. I don't have internet service, but I can afford a fucking bus pass and go to the library. Ain't like the library's across the street from me. I gotta drive 20 minutes to get to my local library. Also, the fact that the library closes at 5 p.m. and the library filters. Uh, and know, most of the libraries you, are infected with malware. You you, you, you <laughs> cannot look at porn. And, and, and I don't mean going to X Hamster. I mean, there are, you can't go to the Hustler website to buy an issue of Hustler oh. from the library. Oh, some of the libraries are, are also heavily, filtering now like uh, political sites. So good luck going to uh, Daily Beast. 
or daily caller or anything like that on a library computer, you won't make it. Yeah. So but that's a discussion for so another time. Brilliant. What Comcast is trying to do is Comcast is trying to say, we are in charge. You will do what we want. Yeah. And with Ajit Pai as the head of the FCC, because right now, I just got an email today from the Fight for Your Freedom Foundation about how Ajit Pai is right now, today, having backdoor meetings with Comcast, AT&T, and Verizon to see if they can work something out. Yeah. You know what that means? We're all trying to come to the right terms so we can kill net neutrality together. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, anybody who uses uh, uh, torrents, say goodbye to torrents forever as we know it because the first thing they're going to do is get rid of torrents they've already done it once before because a lot of this all stemmed from originally when comcast got caught filtering torrent traffic in the early 2000s they were slowing it down to extremely slow speeds and the only reason people found out about it was they started complaining to the government. The government went to them and Comcast goes, you know, we weren't filtering anything. And all of a sudden everything went back to normal. Just like, like I said, look at what happened to Verizon like two weeks ago. Look, it was a mistake. The, the stuff didn't work properly and it would have continued to not work properly it, because the only reason it stopped being throttled was when somebody figured it out and contacted them. Yeah. They would have continued to throttle Netflix and YouTube and said, look, these guys are our competition. Oh, oops. Yeah. And it's not going to end. So I urge everybody left, right, whatever your political spectrum is, I don't really matter to me. You need to fight for net neutrality. Net neutrality is not some evil thing the government's going to come in and start filtering all your internet connections and everything like everyone on makes it seem. That's not what's gonna happen. What we need to do is actually go out and fight net neutrality because what it really is gonna do is keep the ISPs and the service providers from coming in and controlling your content. Because if we don't do it now, this is we're never gonna be able to do it. Because right now we're gonna be down to AT&T and Comcast and Verizon owning Pretty much the entire last mile connections to everything to last mile is by the way a term for what we use for the connection coming to your house it's called the last mile they're gonna own all the last mile connections we cannot allow that we cannot let them dictate what you can and cannot see and unfortunately I, I too many people I know in my political spheres are for or against or rather are against net neutrality and i don't understand why they're because under some they've been fed the line because see when, when you because now comcast is a you know remarkably conservative organization and so to the conservatives who want to get rid of net neutrality they see this as this is a win for my side wait Com comcast is is uh conservative Comcast is very conservative. They will begin censoring Muslim websites. They will begin censoring gay websites and things like that. The same They've already that tried MS, to do that. that. They that have the MSNBC. same goals. <laughs> they have the same goals as the right wing does. So yeah. they're allies whether they like it or not. Yeah, I mean, this is the same company that owns uh, NBC and Universal. I wouldn't call them left wing or right wing organizations. <laughs> but uh, fair enough. There is a problem, though, that uh, where they do. And the other issue, before we wrap up, I want to talk about real quick is content ownership. The main one of the key problems that we have right now is that Comcast and AT and T are going to be not only the content providers but they're also going to own the distribution method as well this was you know this is what broke up the studio system back in the what 40s when the theaters were told they can no longer own or the uh, studios can own theaters anymore i think right, that was I remember in, that well yeah you, know, you do remember like back in the early day of film the, the studios owned the theater chains 
Yes. Okay. Well, that was broken up because the government came in and said, you can't own the theaters and the movies because you're creating a monopoly because you'll only see a Fox movie in a Fox theater. You'd only see a Warner Brothers movie in a Warner's theater, United Artists and United Artists Theater, which actually United Artists still owns some theaters, by the way. It's going to possibly come down to that too with Comcast because Warner Brothers is creating their own their own streaming service. Comcast owns their own streaming service. Viacom owns their own streaming service. Disney's building their own streaming service. Netflix will probably be dead in the next five years. Uh, I, I predict they'll get bought by Amazon. Amazon will probably be the only independent still around. And you really think they're all going to be able to just allow anybody access to that pipe? If AT&T which owns time will own time warner and comcast are the two biggest providers in the country no they're going to put everything into their own services everything with com comcast is going to get priority to their own stuff at t is going to get priority to the warner brothers stuff so if you want to watch anybody else's content you're going to have a hell of a time doing it without net neutrality exactly and that, net need, that has is, to be stopped net neutrality is a necessity and necessity people yes and josh and i don't agree on a whole lot we really don't but on this one we agree 100 percent that this is probably one of the most important legislations for freedom in this country it really honestly is because the internet is the last bastion of freedom we have in the in the in, the, uh, in this country where you can pretty much do and say what you want unfiltered I mean, let, let, let me put let me put let me put it in terms anybody can understand. Your porn is under attack. Yes, your porn is under attack. Exactly, and you don't think they're not going to figure out a way to? I don't know. I don't know if they'll. You like chicks with dicks? You're not going to get that under Comcast. Well, then they'll have a problem with the lefts because you're like you're filtering my chick with dick porn, and now you're being biased against trans porn or hermaphroditic porn. <laughs> I'd love to see that lawsuit. That would be awesome. All right. Josh, where can I find you online? I'm at 1201beyond.com. I can be contacted at 1201beyond at gmail.com. And Matt is always wrong. Yes. Except when we're right on this. You're still wrong. Even if even if we happen to agree, it, just, <laughs> it, it, it means I changed your mind. Exactly. Yes, my mind is easily changed. Anyways, follow me on Facebook at Admiral Joker and Matthew Majeski. Also, quit your whining on Facebook and YouTube at Admiral Joker for all of our content. So be sure to check us out. Have a good night.